Hey everyone, Josh here with Fresh Start Customs, and today do I have a treat for you guys. This laser has been in the works for two to three months now. I've been trying to get my hands on it to show you guys. This is the F1 Ultra, the big brother to the F1 from X-Tool, and this thing is awesome. I'm just gonna flat out say it right now. Um, I've only used it for a little bit. As you can see, these are all the test engravings that I did just to find settings. Um, in this video, we're going to be specifically talking about the conveyor belt and showing you the conveyor belt feature so you can actually do batch engravings. So all of these different types of styles, I have a whole bunch of a stack of them. We're going to go ahead and try this out for like the paper coasters. We've got actual playing cards that you can engrave on. Um, and then we have the little scratch paper. Um, I've got just a few of those. I may get some more when we go to do this. Um, but overall, we're going to try the actual batch engravings. I have yet to try that yet, um, and uh, I'm super excited for it. Basically, when you have the conveyor belt hooked up, it's going to just drop your items onto the conveyor belt itself, and then it's going to just spit them out the other side and engrave no matter which direction they're in. So I'm super excited to share that with you guys. Um, first up, let's talk about the laser because it's my first video talking about this laser. Um, I 100% recommend this laser for sure. Um, I'll throw up some engravings of these test settings here first before we get into the conveyor belt so you can see how quickly this is. I'll do like a live engraving of one of these and then we'll do like a sped up version of another of the others. Um, but just, just how fast it can engrave something of that size is outstanding to me, just like the F1. Uh, these are ultra fast, um, super reliable machines. My F1 is held up to pretty much everything that I can throw at it. The one thing you want to be careful of is that you don't add too much power and engrave right onto the flat surface. And that's what this little metal slap uh, tray is for. That's for cutting. Um, so if you ever think that you're going to mess up like a setting, I would probably put it on top of that first try out your setting. That way, if you do mess it up, you're just messing up that tray versus this permanent um, tray down here. A few things that I want to uh, establish that are different from the F1 to this one. This one, it has more powerful laser in it. It has the 20 watt diode and the 20 watt fiber laser in this. So you can actually do metal on this one. The F1 has a removable tray. This one does not have a removable tray, so you won't be able to engrave onto like tables, for example, with this one like you can with the F1. So if you want that feature, you're gonna have to go with the F1. Um, but overall, uh, this thing is amazing. I can't wait to get into all the different features. Like I said, we're gonna be talking about the um, auto conveyor belt today, and then we'll be doing like metal, or we'll be doing some curved objects in other related videos I'm gonna be making separately on this machine. Um, that's enough talking from me. Let me go ahead and show you guys all the test settings I came up with. I used all the preset settings that work best with this, and then you can tweak it however you need from there. Um, but those are the settings that we're gonna be using today. Uh, so let me go ahead and show you guys a live engraving of that, and, uh, and then a couple of sped up engravings of the other ones. And then we're gonna try this actual conveyor belt out and see how it works. All right, you guys, so now you can see that we have the auto pass-through belt hooked up here, and then we have our two screws into the center that locks this into place. We're going to be using these paper coasters here first. Um, I've got a stack of them on here. I'm going to try and lay them down as they engrave. Uh, we first have to measure out our first um, piece here, 
and then we're going to uh, allow it to auto detect this. So I'm going to mute this because the, the sound of the actual air filter is going to be playing. And then you can see this print as it goes along. So I'm going to try and throw up a video of the software too that's showing it, framing it out. And then uh, we'll go from there. Real quick, before we get started, I wanted to show you guys how to use this as well. They got their instructions built in right here. Uh, it says step one, install and connect the conveyor belt. Check, we've already done that. Cloud services are required for this function. So we need to connect to a network and log into your account. I've already done that as well. Um, step two is place the material in the processing area as a sample. And then we're going to refresh it. We've already refreshed it and we have that image on the software here. And then in the uh, canvas design, we have to design a processing object on the sample material. I've already done that as well. Set the processing parameters. We've already set that as well. And then move or resize the bounding box to include sample materials inside and click start to start batching. All right, so as you guys can see, I've already completed all of the instruction tips here. If you need to get to the instructions, you can just tap on it right here where it says read instructions. But now that we're ready to start, we need to frame this out. We're gonna frame out the material and it's auto detected this material. So like it says, you have to make sure that there is a bounding box around this material. Um, I'm gonna just increase this just a little bit just to be safe here something like that. Uh, that looks good to me. And then I'm going to click fill. And then this looks good right here. Um, I've already refreshed my image, like I said. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and do the framing to make sure that looks good too on the material itself. Um, that looks pretty good to me. We're going to just stop the framing and then we'll start the process here. And then now that it's done loading, we're gonna click start. And uh, we're ready to start. So we're gonna see what this does for the very first test here. And we are using craft paper as the preset settings. Then I'm gonna drop some on top of this. So I'm gonna lower this shield a little bit just so I can uh, have it engraved without hurting my eyes here. And we're gonna hit start. And as you can see, it is now moving on and auto detecting the other items here. So it should start engraving again. So it has detected the first item and it is now engraving that one. And then it should be able to detect the other ones. We're going to see how accurate this is and if it can de detect it that close to the edge like I have it. And then while this is going, I'm going to go ahead and just drop two more on here and see what it does here. As you can see, it jumped right to this one down below. So it's now starting to do that engrave. So it's working properly. This is a pretty cool little feature here. All right, you guys. So as you can see, I think I had these stacked too close together. I think they need to be further apart than that. I'm gonna move this one out of the way a little bit and see if that works better here. But um, as you can see, you probably have to space it further than what I did. It was only able to detect this next one over. So we're going to skip that. That actually saves some time in the video anyways. But I think you get the point. As long as you have it spaced out far enough in those subsections that it slides over, it's going to do that. And we're going to do that with the next batch of uh, material here in just a moment. All right, our first one just fell off the side and it is now on the last unit here. It looks like it was not able to detect that last one. So we're gonna go ahead and stop it here. All right, you guys, so as you can see, we now have these three engraved right here. Um, this turned out pretty well. They look great. They're all in the same place like it's supposed to be. Uh, but as you can see, it did skip a few of those. I'm not sure the exact reason why. Um, it could be just based on how close together or how far apart I had them. Um, so that is going to play into it. So we're going to try this again, but this time we're going to try it with like the little uh, playing cards here. 
Um, it's gonna look like this here, these little playing cards. We're gonna try those out next. Now these take a little bit longer to burn. So I'm only gonna do like three of these. Um, and then we'll move to the next thing right after this. Okay guys, so as you can see, we now have uh, the, the cards ready and we have it refreshed. And now we're going to switch this back to batch processing. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead and frame it, make sure it frames. And this time I'm just putting the word X tool on it to speed it up. We're gonna stop framing, that looks fine. It's a little off center, but I'm gonna just leave it there. And then we're gonna go start to process. Now that it's detected it, we're gonna click start. And then we're gonna hit start on this little switch right here. And we need to put the lid down so we don't hurt our eyes. As you can see, it's now engraving here. I'm gonna lift that lid just a little bit so it doesn't catch the edge of the next one here. And as you can see for this one, I went ahead and rotated it. So it should have to rotate in a different direction in order to engrave that here. Um, I guess it was not able to detect it here. We'll see if it'll detect this one. But these are a shiny object uh, surface here. So I don't know how well this is gonna detect. There we go. This one it detected, so it's doing it now. Um, let me grab this really quick. As you can see, this is kind of a shiny surface, so that could be interfering with it. So that is a possibility too. So um, I would say this is a hit or miss on the engravings here. But overall, this is still a huge time saver, especially if you put a bunch on there at once. And as you can see, that is the end of that. So we're gonna go ahead and stop this again. So as you guys can see, here is the two that engraved. It turned out really well. This is gonna end up saving you time in the long run. But as I said, these, do, uh, these are a little shiny and under this lighting that could be affecting it as well. So I might need to dim the lights a little bit while it goes through so I can see these a little bit better. But next up, we're gonna try the black scratch paper um, and see how that works on this black belt and see if it can even detect those. And we'll go from there. All right, you guys, so as you can see, we now have the scratch paper on here. This one, I'm not sure what I'm expecting from because this is black on black and it's very close to the same color. Autofocus wasn't able to measure this out. So I had to manually focus it with the up and down buttons here. So we'll see if this even engraves more than one, especially with them not all being perfectly flat and it's just paper here. So uh, with that said, let me go ahead and turn on the air filter first this time. I'm gonna frame this out and then we're gonna hit start here. As you can see, I got it framed out and I'm waiting for it to process it now and detect it. But it doesn't look like it's detecting it here. Yep, as uh, as suspected here, it is not detecting it here. Let me go ahead and start this over. It's detecting that piece there. Let's go ahead and start this over here. So I'm gonna try this one more time to see if it can detect, but we might have uh, our first complete failure here. Uh, so let's go ahead and try that one more time. All right, you guys, so I just don't think in my current lighting it's going to detect this properly. Um, it looks like it's just skipping through and it's not detecting these items properly here. Yeah, it looks like it won't be able to detect that. So on darker objects, I don't know how well it's going to detect. Um, so I'm going to stop this for now. All right, you guys, so there you have it, the F1 Ultra from X-Tool and the auto pass-through conveyor belt here and my first ever engraving with batch files here. So obviously we had some successes and that would be these lighter colored objects here. Um, in my opinion, these went really well despite the user errors along the way, such as putting them too close together so it couldn't process them all correctly. Um, or the ambient lighting in here. I did get the ambient lighting warning a lot, so that could have been what played into this, but let's just say it was all perfect and it skipped over, not from user error and not from the lighting. This is gonna save you a huge amount of time in my opinion. Even if it skips over some, it's not gonna engrave on the actual unit itself, which is a good thing. So I'm kind of glad that it did fail halfway through on some of these. 
and it skipped over those just to show you guys a real life experience. That's why I'm leaving it in this video, including the one that failed altogether was this black scratch paper here. I think that was just too close to the same color as this. And with this lighting here, that could have been affecting it. But I wanted to make sure that you guys could see everything in here. That's why I have the studio so well lit. Um, but just keep that in mind. I'd probably stay away from black objects. Now, with that said, you probably watched other videos where they wa they use those little metal business cards. I plan on doing a future video with those, but I didn't want to do a repetitive video for my first video that other creators have done. And I just wanted to grab random stuff that I had on Amazon to show you guys what, what this is capable of doing. And I wanted to show you a variety instead of just one object here. But overall, I do encourage you to get this with the conveyor belt. I think it's awesome. It's gonna work better, in my opinion, for like keychains, like those wooden keychains, metal keychains, the little dog tags. Since this is a fiber laser, we are gonna be doing a metal engraving video in the future. I'm super excited for that. I hope you guys stick around for that. Overall, the unit on itself, all by itself, I highly recommend. And then the batch files, um, I definitely recommend that too if you're gonna be doing a lot of keychain engravings. Obviously, I have some more learning to do on this and I hope to do a future updated video on batch filing once I get some like keychains in and more solid objects that this thing is made for, such as like necklace engraving, those kind of things. I think that's what a majority of the people are gonna be making and using this for and not like these little paper coasters here. But overall, I wanted to show you my first experience, exactly how it was right out of the box so you can see what to expect with uh, zero experience right off, right off the gate without any prior knowledge to it. Um, if you guys have any questions, like always, leave them down in the comments below. If you plan on getting the X-Tool F1 Ultra, use uh, our referral link and our code down below to save $80 off the unit. Um, other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and we'll catch you guys in the next one.